If you were given the choice between the Canon 24mm f2.8 and the Canon 50mm f1.8, which should you buy? Let's find out. I've already compared each of these lenses to the kit lens in previous videos, so now let's put them against each other and see each of their strengths. First up, we have the ever-popular Canon EF mount 50mm 1.8. This is one of the most popular lenses to buy as a first upgrade, and it's going to be a tough fight for its contender. This beast of a lens is going up against the Canon EF-S mount 24mm f2.8. This lens is definitely not as popular as the 50mm, but that doesn't mean it can't hold its own against it. So let's get into the fight. Round one is usability, and the bottom line is each of these lenses are going to be used in very different situations. It is possible to use the 24mm in a vlogging scenario, but with the APS-C crop on the Canon M50, it's equivalent to a 38mm, so it'll be a stretch. It'll be pretty tight on your face, but it is possible. If you're in a space where there's not much room or you want a lot more background in the shot, the 24mm is going to be a lot wider than the 50mm, so it makes more sense in this situation. And with the f-stop being 2.8, you can still produce some bokeh. It's not as good as the 50mm, but it is still bokeh. The 50mm is just a beast when it comes to bokeh. The prettiness of the blurry background, obscuring everything around you, it's just wonderful. But you can't vlog with it. I mean, you could try. It'll be like a nose or an eye. With the APS-C crop, it's equivalent to an 80mm. That makes it great for portraits or products or some B-roll where you wanna be really close to something. It makes people look really good, but the camera has to be pretty far away, so if you're trying to film yourself, you, you can't even touch it. I mean, you can barely even see yourself in the viewfinder. <laughs> Despite these drawbacks, I tend to use it in a setting like this where I've got plenty of room. It just, it looks too good to not use. Both of these lenses have pretty wide apertures, which means they're going to be better in low light situations than the kit lens. However, the 50 millimeter is going to do even better than the 24 millimeter, because at the lowest setting of f 1.8, it lets in more than a full stop of light than the 24 millimeter when comparing the two. In case you didn't know because I didn't, with aperture you multiply or divide by 1.4 to go up or down a stop of light. So if you like shooting up close, the 24 millimeter is going to be a lot more suitable. If you like to take a step back when filming or work in low light, the 50 millimeter is going to be better. The type of shooting you like to do is going to determine the usability of each lens for you. In previous videos, I used round two, for versatility, but these are both prime lenses. So they have about the same amount of versatility, which is not a whole lot. So instead, let's use round two to look at some examples. I want to compare what these two lenses look like in similar situations so that you can get a feel for them and make a better choice based off of that. The first thing I want you to take a look at is this setup. I'm currently using the 50 millimeter wide open at f1.8 and I'm using the ISO to regulate the exposure. Now you're looking at the 24 millimeter from the same distance. It's wide open at f2.8 and I had to bring the ISO up a little bit to compensate for the exposure. As you can see, there's a lot more in the shot and I look a lot smaller. Now I'm in a different area with the 50 millimeter and my goal is to show you what it looks like when I match my size in the frame with the 24 millimeter. Even though I'm still the same size in the frame, you can see a lot more of the stuff around me. And I seem further away from the stuff that's in the background. Hopefully it makes you feel like you're right here in the shot with me. In contrast, the 50 millimeter makes you feel more like an observer sitting on the front porch, looking at me creepily through like some binoculars or something. And now I've noticed. Hi. So now all that's left is round three, which is price. The 50 millimeter is $125 new on Amazon. I looked on Facebook Marketplace and found quite a few examples used for around $100. That's a savings of $25. To put that into perspective, that savings can buy you 38.75 ounces of Hershey's chocolate. The 24 millimeter is $150 on Amazon. Again, on Facebook Marketplace, I found plenty of them used for around $125, and I even found a few examples around $100. That's a savings up to $50, which is twice as much Hershey's chocolate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a diet right now. 
That makes the decision kind of easy. Do you like a little bit of chocolate or a lot of chocolate? <laughs> Seriously though, you can get both of these lenses for around the same price, so it comes down to how you like to film. One other consideration is that on the Canon M50, the kit lens is a 15 to 45 millimeter. That means the 24 millimeter is covered, and the 50 millimeter is just a little bit longer than the longest focal length on the kit lens. My recommendation is to take a couple of weeks to see how you film with the kit lens. See if you tend to use lower focal lengths or higher focal lengths. If it's on the lower side, go with the 24 millimeter. You might get more use out of that one. Or if it's on the higher side, go with the 50 millimeter. If you want to try low light photography, then I would recommend going with the 50 millimeter just because of that wider aperture. With that said, if you do go with the 50 millimeter, you'll have to accommodate for the focal length by just backing the camera up from the subject a little bit. Personally, I use the 50 millimeter here when I have plenty of room and plenty of time to set up the shot I want, and I use the 24 millimeter whenever I'm going out somewhere that might have low light situations. But I don't know everything, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Before I end this video, I wanted to say thank you for 50 subscribers. I honestly didn't think I would ever get to the point where I had 50 subscribers, so Thank you for watching. And for those of you who aren't subscribed, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thank you again to all of my subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video.